Chair, distinguished delegates, fellow youth delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I am deeply honored to offer my speech as a representative of the young generation of the Republic of Korea. We assemble together here to determine to protect our children, break the vicious cycle of malnutrition and food insecurity, save them from unspeakable violence and unjust illiteracy, put an end to child trafficking and child labor, abolish the use of child soldiers and the practice of female genital mutilation, and of course, realize better cooperation among us. I could speak at length about the successes and inspiring efforts of my role models towards its end, but I believe our purpose today is to seek how to build upon those efforts and how to make further progress at this very moment. We're here not because we're obliged to routinely discuss and follow up the special session on children in 2002, but we're here to advance the hands-on efforts of thousands of organizations and people, including some of the great exemplars sitting here today. This week, I was fortunate to attend OSRSG on violence against children, high-level roundtable, as well as the global publication launch of five years on, a global update on violence against children. In these two events, I was most inspired by successful cases and pioneering intervals. The comprehensive report incorporated the wisdom of all sides and long-term specific measures to increase the security for children. I believe it will continue to address the multiple dimensions of the problem that our children face today and thereby deepen our cooperation. However, as the representative of the youth, I would humbly like to point out one thing. Mr. Chairman, one imperative measure of our success will be the degree to which you have allowed us, the young generation's participation and involvement in the planning and implementation of the National Plan of Action. I personally believe that the real change happens at the very local level, where the reality meets the real energy creators, the youth. National and local governments, as well as regional institutions, must encourage and NGOs must recruit the youth so that the needs and their ideas are taken into account and their potential and opportunities are fully brought out. I believe that the younger generations can participate on their own terms and provide support for building children's capabilities with passion and love, but without political color or want for profit. We youth are the most dedicated resources out in the field, available on the most local level, but equipped with most globalized minds and intercontinental connections. We are the most vigorous in trying to have our voices heard, ideas implemented, and changes made. We, as the dot-com generation, have the ability to wield modern technologies and harness social media and make the best out of it. I believe that all the brilliant ideas and technologies combined with further youth participation can create synergy in seeing that children are better protected and educated. As of today, there are little more than 1,000 days left until 2015. Within 1,000 days, we must save millions of children. We need to recognize the urgency to act now and necessity to involve youth leadership and above all, righteousness in honoring the children's rights. I firmly believe that building up feasible measures starts with understanding the time constraint and realizing this time constraint begins with the simple fact. The children grow up so quickly that you blink and they're gone. Dis dear distinguished delegates, even this moment of solemn retrospect and recognition, we need to realize that we are, um, we are prolonging the aching need for the children. It is thus our understanding of available resources like innovative minds of the youth and our capacity to bring scattered hopes together that will guide us to realize the progress now. Because this critical problem concerning children's rights merits global consensus, I believe that we need the young generation's free exchange of ideas, constructive criticism, creativity and energy. The present moment calls for the mobilization and coordination of new and additional resources at both national and international levels. Mr. Chairman and distinguished delegates, some say this is the time of my life to speak in the General Assembly, representing the passionate voices of my generation. But no, the time of my life will be the time when I can proudly say 
I was there at the 66th session of the United Nations General Assembly and humbly testify that I've heard your words, saw you keeping your words, and helped you deliver them to the children. Before I conclude, Mr. Chair, the Guinness World Record for the largest international pledge campaign was Mr. Mandela's keeping his commitment to the delegates of the Children's Forum, where he has gained more than 94 million Say Yes for Children pledges. This was handed to the then President of the UN General Assembly, Dr. Han Sung Su, who was born and raised in the same country as me. I want to be the witness to the moment where another record is born, from right here. I envision the day when I'll be able to hand over more than 100 million pledges to the United Nations General Assembly President, not for Say Yes for Children, but rather Say Taken Care Of for the Children. Let us not accept the grim prediction that MDGs are not reachable by 2015. Let us endeavour to do the impossible and prove it possible. As a delegate of Korea with only 20 years of life to share with you, I would humbly request that you take from my remarks something I am very sure of today. It is with our human compassion and our irrepressible enthusiasm that we must overcome <coughs> poverty, inadequate education, intolerable violence and injustice done to the children. Only if we pull together our utmost efforts and innovative bold approaches will we answer the call of history. Thank you, Mr. Chair.